and welcome to Cross Course Cryptozoology. So many times in the field of cryptozoology, what you deal with in terms of evidence isn't physical track casts or hair samples or any other kind of bio sample. And even though most of the time it is just testimony, the real evidence that you deal with most of the time is photographic evidence. And photographic evidence is very tricky. It can be very questionable because it can be very flimsy. Photographic evidence is some of the easiest evidence to fake. It's easier, perhaps even, than physical evidence like a track because you have to go somewhere where there would be tracks to fake a track. As long as you have the computer, you can fake a photograph. Or a video, for that matter, if you're more high-end. One particular sect of cryptozoology that seems to deal with this just very relentlessly is the Dogman subject. Perhaps comparable, or maybe even more so, than the Sasquatch sect of cryptozoology, the Dogman subject gets a lot of just either exceedingly ambiguous or very questionable photos that are claimed up and down to be the real deal, which would be a premature conclusion at best. And one person who has dealt with a lot of this in their time is Ryan Paul Tremblay. I had Ryan on the Crash Course Cryptozoology podcast not too long ago, around two months, maybe three months ago now. He used to help host the Venomous Fringe podcast, and now he's hosting his own podcast called A Whisper to a Scream. Ryan is very heavily involved in the Dogman subject and looks to this kind of stuff whenever he can for any news on evidence, updates on expeditions, etc., etc. Recently, Ryan got the chance to really examine one particular photograph that, much like photographs like the Onaway photo, has been pervasive throughout the Dogman subject for quite a long time now on the internet. And as the subsequent interview will reveal, it turns out he's actually cracked the case on it. That interview will now play in its entirety so you can get an idea of what it is that's being talked about, how exactly this came about, and really just a thorough explanation of this particular case and how it's wrapped up. Right. That was interesting how that happened. What happened was somebody sent me the Dogman photo. Right. And I had seen it circulate a number of times, and I'm going, I think that's fake. I think it's fake. Then I was looking at the picture of the Dogman in the photo, and I happened to be watching that movie Cursed, mm. right? And so I was like, wait a minute, is that the same werewolf? So I did a Google image search, and I found that stock photo that I showed you. I'm right. going, wait a minute, that's the same exact Dogman or werewolf from that photo. Yeah, right, right, right. Which was really kind of, um, I feel like that photo is one that is so interesting to so many people because it looks so weird. Not even necessarily in like a, oh, it looks fake sense. It's like, wow, I've never seen a picture of a werewolf where it's like uh, leaning in a weird way or standing like that or, or anything like that. What did right. you... Well, the picture that I found, that was a life-size stand-up. Right. Uh, the werewolf, so I'm going, wait a minute, it's the same exact thing. Mm. And the original stand-up of the statue, if you want to call it that, it actually had a base. It had a wooden base. Oh, did it really? Yeah, so if you look at that photo, you can see where the wooden base is in the photo. That's you know, interesting. That's you see really the dark interesting. line where the shadow is, where that base ends. Oh, so we, I mean, I mean, that's kind of the smoke and gun right there in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. isn't it? With with just the presence of a what what would appear to be a wooden base in the photo. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty so, I mean, distinct. I don't want to burst bubbles, but you know, when you see a fake, you gotta call it fake. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's what I did. And, you know, I was like, hey, that's what it is. Okay, cool. I found out. Sweet. Wow, totally. So as kind of a background for that, if you don't mind me asking, um, kind of one serious question, then one fun question, I suppose. Um, okay. What was like your first exposure to the alleged Dogman photograph that's being discussed here? Um, and I after that, what was your first exposure to the movie Curse? Okay, my first exposure from the movie, it came out, you know, when the werewolf topic was really, really big. Mm. I've always been a big werewolf fan, so I'm like, ooh, a new werewolf movie, I'm going to watch this one. Of course, it has Christina Ricci in it, so, you know, that, that helped a lot. <laughs> so, you know, I thought the werewolf design was awesome, so I became a fan of the movie, and I actually own it myself. So, you know, when I saw that movie, I was like, yes, awesome. But then the photo, I think I saw it on YouTube originally. I want to say it was YouTube. 
Mm. And I just, I don't know, something about it just didn't seem right to me. You know, all along, it just kind of seemed like it was a fake photo. So coming mm. across the photo, though, of the werewolf they used in Curse, and it had the same pose, I'm going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You know, so when I put the two together and I'm looking at them side by side, I'm kind of going, wait a minute. They did use that. Right. Other people. Hmm. Yeah. And all that's... you have to do is turn it black and white, and you can do that in pretty much any editing software that you have. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty rudimentary stuff, making a silhouette out of an object, which is essentially what the mm. Dogman is. It's a silhouette with some white outlining, which is super easy to do. It's, it's pretty rudimentary. Right, um, and for the shadows, all they get to do is use that smudge tool. Yeah, exactly, right. That was one thing that had struck me about I never thought to look up, um, like, stands for anything, but mm. I had seen it maybe, like, I don't know, maybe two years ago at first, mm. like the first time I ever saw it. And one thing that struck me that I thought was kind of strange was the shadow of the dogman because you can see the street light lamp shadow too right um it's like it's blurrier than it's supposed to look in a weird way exactly it, it yeah, looks the shadow angle the shadow angle isn't quite right people got to kind of look at the whole wherever the light's coming from mm. the shadow is going to be opposite of that yeah right and instead it kind of extends over to the side of that where, mm-hmm. where it should be going more angular behind the actual subject well, you know, even the story behind that, it didn't make a lot of sense how that was supposed to be like a CCTV. Yeah, what is the story behind this alleged photograph? What was the presented story? Well, apparently somebody that was a security guard caught this on a closed-circuit television. Hmm. But the thing is, there's no timestamp, and closed-circuit televisions always have timestamps on them. Right. You know, and the fact that that's absent, it made you wonder, well, if this is closed-circuit, how come there's no timestamp to record the time and date? Hmm. You know, so if there's no time and date, you do have to wonder, are they making this up? Right, right. Especially if you recorded it on a television like that. You know, you're going to have the time right there. You're going to know what time it was logged in, what time of night it was, the exact time down to the second. Mm. And the fact that they couldn't present this, you're kind of going, well, how is that possible, though? Yeah, right. That is really a good point to bring up, I think. There's there's a lot of holes in that kind of testimony, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hmm. just, you know, you happen to capture a werewolf, we'll call it that for the sake of the conversation, you happen to capture a werewolf on closed circuit television, and you're not going to record the time? Yeah, you you'd think that? that would be super significant, yeah. You would think, because you'd want to know, okay, it showed up at this time, it stayed this long, it left at this time, but you have no time catalog at all? That doesn't make sense to me. Mm. What was... Did it move? You know, if it moved, how come there's not more than one photo? Right. It, to me, it's like, you know, if you're going to capture something like that, you're going to record it moving. You're not going to have a photograph. You're going to have that video. Yeah, exactly. And if it's CCTV, most of the time that is video instead of um, camera taking. Or, I'm sorry, yeah. picture taking. So right. uh, for a security place to have CCTV that only takes a photograph, and apparently in, in that testimony can't take photographs of this thing moving from what we assume would be from right to left, or sorry, from left mm. to right, um, that would be a, a kind of especially not good camera setup. Right, right. And you would think, too, if it's a camera like that, couldn't they take shots of it moving each step? Right. You know, or progressing closer to the camera. Mm. But they weren't able to do that, so that always made me suspicious of it. Totally, yeah. The, the whole situation is really kind of reminiscent of... I think it was around maybe six to nine months ago now when the whole Onaway thing broke on you, on Reddit. Um, oh, yeah, I remember when that one came out, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few a few channels jumped on that. Um, I think the first one, too, was Para Breakdown, Paranormal Breakdown. And, oh, yeah, I want to check that. Yeah, yeah, and it reminds me so much of that situation. And, and I guess kind of the, the closing question for this would be, like, um, how significant do you think video editing might end up being to analyzing dogman photographs now that two of the longest standing ones have essentially been pretty much outed as uh, digitally edited hoaxes. Personally, I think it's still really important. I mean, you never know. We could get that one good video that solidifies, yes, they're real. But we just, we got to learn to tell the difference between, you know, the fakes and the real stories. If they can't supply enough details... Then we get to look into that a little bit more and go, okay, how come you're lacking on details for this? Because mm. this is monumental. You know, if you see a werewolf or a Bigfoot or whatever you want to call them, you know, you're going to remember all these details. Mm. You're going to mark this stuff down. You're going to make sure you've got your story written in stone. Right. And if they can't do that, you got to kind of wonder, well, why is that? Did you make this up on the fly? Mm. 
you know, maybe I sound a little anal when it comes to that, but I'm not going to get it. Wants to know exact time, exact location. What was it doing? What were you doing? Mm. Yeah, that's a super thorough way of looking at it. And, and really the reason that that's so important is because those details can be just so significant to a case mm-hmm. like this. I mean, that's why it's so significant in crime cases. If you have a right. photograph of a, of a particular crime happening, that's great. What if this, the shadow angle is off and it's not actually noon and someone's lying to you about the time? Right. So being an artist, you know, I do look at the shadows and I look at the light source and see where the light's coming from and seeing if the light's bouncing off of things the right way. Because, you know, as an artist, you pick up on those details. Mm. You know, because if you do a work of art and your shadows are off, it looks fake. It looks terrible. Right. You know, so you get to actually take into calculation, how would the shadow be? What would the angle be? How thick would the shadow be? How dark would it be? Mm. You know, it's all these things you got to take into consideration. So, yeah, I wasn't willing to call that photo genuine until I actually looked at the details. And sadly for the audience, well, (laughs) details prove it was a hoax. Right, right. Well, hey, great detective work on it for starters, and uh, thank you, man. and man, thanks a bunch for the uh, for the chance to interview you really quick about it too. That's really awesome. Thank oh, you. Absolutely. Oh, it's my pleasure, bro. Anything I can do. Something like this might best be a cautionary tale. Premature conclusions are are dangerous, not because maybe you're wrong, because it isn't necessarily dangerous to be wrong, but. What's dangerous is to be wrong in a way that fools everybody, or rather misleads everybody, for years on end. That isn't a productive mindset, and it's a very counterproductive effect created by that mindset. So whenever examining evidence, especially the photographic sort, tread carefully. That being said, until next time.